Hello guys, welcome to uh, this new video. Today we are going to do the paper one of October and November 2019, the variant 1-1. One, one. Okay, so now moving on to question number one, we have a fraction question. We have three multiply um, by one, four over seven. So the first thing we need to do is we need to expand this fraction. So three remains the same, multiply by so 1 times 7 is 7, 7 plus 4 is 11, so it becomes 11 over 7. So now let's simplify. So we have 3 times uh, thir uh, times 11, that will be 33, and then 7, so this is basically 1, so 1 times 7 is 7. So now we have to simplify, so uh, we know that we have... Uh, so we have 7 times 4 is 28, so 4 is outside. So 28, so what remains? 5 remains, so 5 on top and 7. So the answer for part A will be 4, 5, 7. Okay. So now for part B, we have uh, decimal place multiplications. So we have 1.3 times 0 0.3. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to first ignore the decimal points. So I have 13 times 3, right? I will have 39. So now I have to count the decimal place we have. So here we have one decimal place, and here we have one decimal place. So in total, we have two decimal places. So we have to move two decimal places. Okay, so your answer will be 0 0.39. So another method I can use is to first convert the numbers into fractions. So 1.3 is 1, 3 over 10. And then 0 0.3 is 3 over 10. So we have uh, 13 over 10 times 3 over 10, which will give us 39 over 100, and which is 0 0.39. So two methods but the same answer. So the answer will be 0 0.39. Question number two. We have a scatter diagram that shows that the marks that 12 students each obtain in a test A and in test B. So give a reason why it is not appropriate to draw a line of best fit for this diagram. So the reason is because we observe that there is no relationship between test A and test B so we can have a, a point here in A and we can have a point here in B, so it has no relationship. So your answer will be, uh, it is clear that uh, we do not have a uh, linear relationship relationship with uh, between the two sets, between um, test a and B. So that is the reason why you cannot draw a straight line in this because you can see the answers are pretty much everywhere in the graph. So there's no um, there's no straight relationship between test A and test B. That's why you cannot draw a straight line in this. Uh, question number three. The diagram shows that the net of a solid. This is a net diagram. So what is the special name of the solid? So this is a net shape. So usually if we have to close it, it will become, so we have to close this up, close this up, up and up. It will become a pyramid. Okay, so now for this solid, write down the number of vertices, it will have five vertices. Okay, so that's it for question number three. Question number four, part A, factorize one minus 36 P square. So the first thing you will notice that we have number one, and number 36, they both are square numbers, which means one is one square, 36 is six square, p square. So we can rewrite this as one square minus six p square. Now remember, when we have this kind of numbers, it will become a plus b, a minus b. So same thing here as well. We will have one plus six p, and 1 minus 6p. So you can do this when you have subtraction of square numbers. Okay, that is your answer for part A. So now moving on to part B, we have factorize 4x plus
plus 3y plus xy plus 12. So you can see we have y here and y here. So we take those two on this side and the rest on this side. So we will have 4x plus 12 and these two will be on this side. So 3y plus xy. So for those two, um, let's factorize those two first. We have 4 in common, so it becomes x plus 3 plus, here we have y in common, it will become 3 plus x. So now let's rearrange these two, so this one. So we have 4x plus 3 plus y x plus 3. So we see this and this are the same, so we take it out, we have x plus 3 and remaining we have 4 plus y. So your answer for this question is this, which is x plus 3 times 4 plus y. Question number 5. We have a television program it is 2 hours and 40 minutes. Part A. It starts at 10.45 p.m. What time does it finish? So we have to add them. So we have to do 22... 45 plus 2 hours and 40 minutes. So here we have 5. So 4 plus 4 is 8. And here will be 2 because time, because 1 hour is 60 minutes, right? So that's why it has to, if we have 60, uh, we have 80 minutes, it will be past 1 hour. So we have to put 1 here. So 25 minutes remains on the back. So now we have 2 plus 2. Uh, is um, 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, so 5. So the time at which it finished will be 25, 25, but we know that uh, midnight is actually 24, so minus 24 we will have 1, 25. So it finishes at 1, 25 a.m. in the morning. Okay, so now moving on to uh, part B. The program, the same program, contains 8 ads breaks which lasts for three minutes. So, which means in total, it will last eight times three minutes, which is 24 minutes. So this is the amount of time that the ads last, 24 minutes. So now, find the fraction of the two hours and 40 minutes that is taken by the ads, okay? So first thing we need to do, since the ads are in minutes, we need to convert the length in minutes. So two hours, and 40 minutes is how many minutes? So we have to take 2 times 60 because 1 hour is 60 minutes plus 40 minutes, which will be 120 plus 40, which is 160. So now we have to find a fraction of the ads. It will be 24 minutes over 160. So now let's simplify. We can divide by 4. We will have uh, 6, 40. Divide by 2, we will have 3 and 20. So your answer will be 3 over 20. So 3 over 20 will be your answer for part B. Question number 6. Uh, write these values in order, starting with the smallest. So we have 1 over 30, we have 0 0.03, we have 1 over 10, 5%, and 2 over 25. So right now, we cannot really compare because we have different kind of numbers. We have fraction, decimals, percentage, so it's hard to compare uh, these numbers. So what can we do is we can uh, change all the numbers to uh, one kind of number. So basically we can change everything into decimals. So let's uh, take this one. So one over 30, what is the decimal um, definition of that? So the, as we know, it will be uh, this. It will keep going, right? So 0 0.333, right? It doesn't need to be exact, it is just an estimation. So this one is the same, so 0 0.03. Uh, 1 over 10 will become 0 0.1. 5%, uh, which is 5 over 100, will become 0 0.05. And the last one, which is 2 over 25, we have to times 4, times 4, it will be 8 over 100, which is 0 0.08. Okay, so which one of these numbers are is the smallest? Smallest will be 0 0.03. Yeah, yeah, I agree, so 0 0.03.
The next one will be uh, this one, 1 over 30, because it is 0 0.03333. So that will be the second smallest. The third one will be 0 0.05, which is 5%, so 5%. And the next one will be 0 0.08, which is 2 over 25. And the last one will be uh, 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1. Okay, you could also do this, do this the other way. You can convert all the decimals and, and, and percentage into fractions and then compare them. So that is for number 6. Question number 7, uh, we have y is directly proportional to x. So this gives us y is directly proportional to x, which means we have this equation, y is equal to kx. So when x equal to 4, y equal to t. So we have x equal to 4 and y equal to t. So we first have to find the value of k. So k is y divided by x, which is t divided by 4. So that's the value of k. So our new equation becomes y equal to t divided by 4 times x. OK, that's the first step. So now, find x in terms of t when y equal to 2. So we have 2. Find the value of x when y equal to 2. So we place y into uh, this equation. We get 2 equal to t over 4 times x. So now we have uh, to find x. So x will be, so we, so 2 times 4, and then we bring this down. It will become divided by t. It will be 8 divided by t. So the value of x will be 8 divided by t when the value of y is equal to 2. Question number eight, by writing each number correct to one significant figure, estimate the value of this fraction. Okay, so here we have one, two, three numbers. We have 59.843, we have 20.13, we have 0 0.9024. Okay, so we have those three numbers. So first we, uh, we ignore the square for now. Okay, so we have to rewrite them into uh, one significant figure. How do we do this? So we first leave the first number alone and then we ask ourselves if 9 is bigger or equal to 5. If the answer is yes, then we add 1 to the first number. So 5, so this one 9, 9 is bigger than 5, yes, so we add 1. So 5 plus 1, which will be 6. And then we convert the rest to 0. It becomes 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so same thing for this one. So we leave the first one alone and we ask ourselves if this number is bigger or equal to 5. So this one is 0, so it is not big or bigger or equal to 5. So we leave this one alone, so it will be 2, and we convert the rest to 0. 20, 0, 0, 0. And the last one is we uh, leave the first number alone. We ask if this one is bigger or equal to 5. The answer is no, so we leave it alone. And then we change everything else to 0. Okay. So now we have these three new numbers we have to replace back in the fraction. So this will become 60 square divided by 20 times 0 0.9. So let's simplify this. So 60 is what? 60, 60 square is 60 times 60 divided by 20 times 0 0.9. So 0, 0, 1, 3. So divide by 3, we get 1, we get 0 0.3. Divide by 3 again, we get 0 0.1, and we get 20. So right now we have 20 over 0 0.1, which becomes 200. So your answer for part 8 will be 200. Okay, so that's it. Um, so just remember, when you have to write something down to one significant figure, we leave the first number alone, and we ask ourselves if this number, the following number, is bigger or equal to 5. If it is, then we add 1 to the first one. If it is not, we convert everything to zero. Question number nine, solve the simultaneous equation. So we have this two equation, x plus four y equal to one. We have three y, three x plus two y equal to eight. So we have two methods of, uh, that we can use to solve these uh, equations. Uh, I will use the substitution method in this one, okay? Question number, uh, equation number one, question number two. So we have x plus 4y equal to 1. So let's make x the subject of formula. So x will be 1 minus 4y. Okay, that's the first step. 
So now let's replace this x value into the equation number 2. So we have 3x. x is what? x is 1 minus 4y plus 2y equal to 8. Okay? So 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times um, minus 4 is minus 12 plus 2y equal to 8. So uh, we send... So we send this over here. We will have minus 12y plus 2y equal to 8 minus 3. So what do we have now? We have minus 12 plus 2 will be minus 10y. 8 minus 3 is 5. So y is 5 divided by minus 10, which is minus 1 over 2. That is your y. So now we have to replace y in this equation to find the value of x. So x will be 1 minus 4y, which is 1 minus 4, y is minus half, becomes 1 minus, so 4 times minus half is minus 2, so minus minus become plus, so 1 plus 2 is 3. So your answer will be x equal to 3 and y equal to minus Question number 10, part A. Amir buys a camera for 250 and sells it for 200. Find his percentage loss. So how do you find the percentage loss? So let's first find his loss. Loss is uh, 250 minus 200. That is his loss, which will be 50. So now percentage loss is lost over initial uh, amount or value times 100. So loss will be 50 divided by initial cost, which is 250 times 100. So cut 0 here, divide by 5, we will have uh, 5, 10, 5, 1, that will be 2. So your answer will be 20. So percentage loss for part A will be 20%. Uh, percent. So now moving on to part B. Uh, Mira invests some money at a rate of 2% per year, simple interest, okay? How many years does it take for investment to double in value? Okay, so let's say, um, let investment be x, right? Let, let it be equal to x. So how many years does it take to um, make x become 2x, double in value? So the way we do this is we have to use the uh, interest, uh, simple interest rate on this one. So the rate of interest will be 2% per year. So how much is she earning every single year? So every year she's earning 2% times X, which is the initial value, which becomes 2 for 100 X, which is 0 0.02 X. So that is the, every year she is making 0.02x. So this is the earning in, in one year, right? So how many years does she uh, need to earn to earn x value to, so that we have x plus x become 2x? So she would need to earn, we have 1x divided by 0.02x. So let's find the number of years. We will have x go away. So we have 1 divided by 0 0.02. So we have to move two decimal place here. Two decimal place here. That will be 100 divided by 2, which is 50 years. So your answer will be 50 years. So how many years does it take to double the value? It will be 50 years. Question number 11. Simplify 7 minus 3 times 5k minus 2. So 7 minus... Let's bring the 3 inside. We will have 3 times 5 is 15k minus 6. So now we re-expand. 7 minus 15k plus 6. So we have 7 plus 6 is 13 minus 15k. And that is your answer for part A. Moving on to part B. Uh, solve the equation. We have 5x squared minus 3x equal to 0. So we can factorize the x outside. We will have x... 5x minus 3 equal to 0. So x 
can be 0 and 5x minus 3 can be 0. So this one is the first answer and 5x equal to 3, x equal to 3 divided by 5, which is 0 0.6. So your answer for this will be 0 or 0 0.6. Question number 12, we have evaluate 3 power minus 2 times 3 power 4. So for indices of the same base, we can just do that. If they have um, it's a multiply, we have to take the powers and add them together because it's multiplied. So minus 2 plus 4 is 2. Your answer will be 9. So part 1 is 9. And part B. Evaluate 3 minus 3 power 0. So anything power 0 is 1. So we have 3 minus 1 is 2. Simplify, we have y power half times 4y power 1 over 4. So these two have the same base, but this does not. So we take it out. We take 4 out. So now we have y half. If we have multiply with the same base, we can add them together. So become 1 over 4. So that will be 4y, 3 over 4. And that is your answer for part C. Question number 13, write the number in standard form. So we have to count by how many decimal places we move. So we can write this in um, standard form. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have to move decimal place which will be this so the answer will be 2.3 times 10 power of minus 4 okay so now we have to evaluate the subtraction of the standard form so observe that on one side we have 8 times 10 power 9 minus 9 times 10 power 8 so since the powers are different 8 9 we cannot subtract directly so we first have to change the powers to make it the same. So what we can do here, we can send one zero over here. It will be 80 times 10 power 8 minus 9 times 10 power 8. So now if it is the same, we can minus. As you can see, it's 8 and 8. So now we can do 80 minus 9 will be 71 times 10 power of 8. So this is your answer, but it needs to be in standard form. So it will be 7.1 times 10 power 9. So that is your final answer for question part B. Question number 14, we have P equal to 2 power 3 times 3 times 5 power 2. That's P. And we have Q, which is 2 times 3 power 2 times 5. Okay, so question part A. Find the highest common factor of P and Q. So let's list down P and Q. So P is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. It's the same thing. We just have expanded the powers into um, a product of its prime factor. Okay. So now we have Q. Q is 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. So how do you find the HCF? So we have to find how many pairs do we have. So here we have one pair, here we have two pairs, and that's the last pair we have. So the HCF is two times three times five, which is 30. So part A will be 30. So now the same thing. Uh, find the lowest common multiple of P, Q, and 21. So P. So let's first find the prime factor of the 21. We have uh, 3 times 7. Okay. So P is what? Same thing. So P is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. Q is equal to 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. And 21 is equal to 3 times 7. So now we have to look at the uh, the prime factors of the uh, of the numbers. So we have prime factor two, prime factor three, prime factor five, and prime factor seven. So we have different numbers, which is two, three, five, seven. Yes. So now we have to find where they occur the most. So as we can see. Um, the maximum occurrence of 2 will be here. 
So 2 times 2 times 2, it is more than anywhere else. So the LCM will begin with 2 times 2 times 2. Times continue. Moving on to number 3, where does it occur the most? We can see here, we have 3 times 3. Right. And the next one, 5. Where do we have the most 5s? In here. So 5 times 5 times 5. And 7. For the last one, where does it occur the most? Only here, times 1, times 7, okay? So now we have to simplify. So this is 8 times uh, 9 times 25 times 7. So we have to find um, the, um, wait, oh, I see. So this is pretty easy. Uh, give your answers as a product of prime factors. So your answer will be 2 times 3, 2 power 3 times 3 power 2 times 5 power 2 times 7. So that is your answer for the LCM. So you just have to find the max occurrences of each prime factor in those three numbers. Just like that, you will find the LCM of the three numbers. So now part uh, C. Find the smallest integer n such that p times n is a square number. So p is what? p is equal to 2 power 3 times 3 times 5 power 2. Okay, so if you want to find um, what is the least number, uh, the smallest integer n to have a square number. So we know that uh, a square number is any number that can go in this to give us the answer, an uh, exact answer, right? Usually, a uh, square factor will have a power of, it will be even, right? So let's find a way to make everything even. So we have to multiply this by what number? If you multiply this by 2 and by 3, so we can have 2 power 4 times 3 power 2 times 5 power 2. So everything is even, which means we can have uh, a square root over these numbers to give us an exact answer. So in this case, the lowest integer will be 2 times 3, so we can have even, even and even. So n will be 2 times 3, which is 6. So answer will be 6 for part C. Question number 15, part A. In the diagram, shade three small, so we have three small triangles are shaded. So this, 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 right? Uh, shade one more small triangle to give the diagram exactly one line of symmetry. So as we observe, this triangle is, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So all the sides are equal, which means this triangle has three lines of symmetry. So it could be here, straight, it could be here, and it could be here. So in this uh, specific example, we have to draw exactly one line of symmetry. To I mean, we have to draw uh, one triangle to make it have one line of symmetry. So we observe that if we draw the line here, the line of symmetry, we have just to draw to shade this one triangle to make it have exactly one line of symmetry. So that will be your answer for part A. Okay, so now moving on to part B, um, we have this circle. We have three triangles and a circle form in a figure that has a rotational symmetry of order three which means that they rotate by 120 degrees, okay? So this is a circle, and this is a center, right? Center, which means this line is what is the radius. So radius, same, 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 right? So now, if the angle of rotation is 120, it means that this side will rotate 120 to become this side. So this big angle here is 120. So uh, how do we find the value of y? It's pretty easy. So the value of y is 120 minus 88. So that will be 1, 10, 2, 11 minus uh, 8 will be 3. So the value of y is 32. So now moving on to this part, we have to find the angle X. Angle X um, is this angle, but we know that this triangle is isosceles, which means that these two angles are the same, right? 
But now, what about this angle? This angle will be equal to this angle because they have uh, symmetry. Symmetry, that's why we have the angle of the same, so 88 as well. So we know the sum of, uh, of the angles in a triangle will be um, 180. So 180, uh, let's do 180 minus 88, what do we get? 7, 10, 2. So now we have 17 minus 8 will be 9. So it means that the sum of these two angles is 92. So what is the size of this one angle? Divide by 2, we'll have 4, 1, 6. So angle X is 46. So you answer here, find angle X, it will be 46. And find angle Y, it will be, um, it will be 32. Okay, so that is your answer for this question. Part. Question number 16, part A. In the Venn diagram, shade the region which represents C intersection A union B dash. So let's first understand what is this notation. So A union B is this two big sets. Dash will be outside of these two big sets. So right now we have everything which is outside of a and b so we have to intersect c so it will be only this region so that will be your answer okay so that is for part a so now moving on to part b we have a universal set which is a b c d e f g h i we have t equal to b d f h j and then we have V equal to A, B, D, G, H, I. Okay, so now first one, we have to list the members of T intersection V dash. So let's find what is inside of V dash. So V dash is anything which is not in V. So uh, we have C, we have, um, we have D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So this is everything in this set. So what is in T? T we have B, D, F, H, J. So what are the members of T intersection V? It will be, we have, uh, which one is common between those two is F, J. So F and J will be the set. So your answer is set F and J. Okay. So now moving on to uh, part two, find the number of T union V. So we first need to find the set uh, T union V. So let's find what, what do we have in this set. So we have A, B, D, uh, we have F, G, H, I, J. So now we have to count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the number is 8. That is your answer for part two. Question number 17. The diagram shows the lines x plus y equal to eight, y equal to half uh, x, x is equal to zero, and y equal to zero. So let's first label the lines. So the first line is x plus y equal to eight. So it is this line. Okay, so we have y equal to half x, it will be this line. The next one will be uh, x equal to 0, which is the y-axis, and y equal to 0, which is the x-axis. Okay, so moving on to part A, we have write down the label, uh, write down the label of the region, which is defined by the three inequalities. So the first one is x plus y is less than 8. So we have the line, everything less than 8 will be on this side. Okay, so that's the first inequality. And then we have uh, y is less than half x. So first is this side and then half x on this side, which means we have this side right now. And the last one is y is positive. So it cannot be down, it can only be this um, that is remaining. So the region that is defined will be region G. So now part B, write down all the inequalities which define region E. So let's first find the region E. It will be um, this region E. It's uh, everything on the positive side 
above this line and above this line. So as we can see, we have this first line. It needs to be on top, which means the first inequality will be y is bigger than half x. Okay, that's the first one. The next one is it needs to be bigger than this as well. So it will be x plus y bigger than 8. And the last one is this line. It needs to be on the right of uh, this line. It will be x bigger than 0. And that's it for question part B. Question number 18. Uh, the masses of 120 uh, serial packets were measured. Okay, So we have 120 packets in total. The results are summarized in the cumulative frequency curve, this one. So now question part one, use the diagram to estimate the median. So median is the midpoint of the elements, which is half times 120 will be 60. So 60th element is the median. So we have to use the graph. So we have to go and find where is 60. So 20, 40, 60 is here. So okay, when we see 60, we draw a horizontal line to cut the graph. Okay, we cut the graph at this point and then we have to draw a vertical line to find the value of the mass okay so we can see at the element 60 the value of the mass is 501 which means the median is 501 gram that's the first part and now we have to find the interquartile range so by definition this is upper quartile minus lower quartile. How do you find the upper quartile? You have to find the 75th element, which is 3 over 4 times 120. 70th, uh, 75th percent element. So we divide by 4, we will have 30. And then 3 times 30, that will be 90. So we have to find the 90th element in this, uh, in this uh, curve. And then this is the upper quartile. So let's find that first. So where is 90? So here we have 20, 40, 60, 80. 90 will be here in the middle. So we have to draw a straight line, a horizontal, a horizontal line to cut the curve and then find the mass by drawing a vertical line. So first line is this line. And then once we cut the curve, we draw a vertical line to find the point. So the upper quartile is 502. So that's the first part of the question. So now we have to find the lower quartile. Lower quartile is so 1 over 4 times 150 which is the 30th element. So 30th element will be well so this is 20, 30 will be about here. So same thing we will draw um, a line to cut the curve and then we will find the answer on the mass axis so this is a uh, one gram so this will be uh, 0 0.2 0 0.4 gram so your answer for this one will be 500 and 0.4 gram so the range will be the upper quartile minus the lower quartile so we will have 502 minus 500.4 which will be uh, 110 10 minus 4 is 6 1 so your answer is 1.6 gram for the interquartile range okay so now part B uh, the measuring scales were used were faulty so there was something wrong with the scales the measured masses were 8 grams more than the actual masses so Every masses were actually overmeasured. It was eight more than the actual masses. So first part, write down the median of the of the masses. So if everything was actually more than it was supposed to be, uh, to find the median, we just have to take the actual median. So five hundred eight minus zero point eight to find the median. So that will be um, zero ten two. So 500, so the median mass will be 502. How about the interquartile range? So 
it will be the same actually because if we um if we decrease this by uh, 0 0.8 we also have to decrease this by 0 0.8 so the difference has been negated in the end it will be the same so the range will be 1.6 gram but of course you can always do it manually you can try that so let's find the new um, upper quartile so we take 502 and then we have to minus uh, 0 0.8 we will have 501.2 so that's the upper quartile and let's find the lower quartile we'll have to take um, 500.4 minus 0 0.8 so we will have 499.10.6 so that will be the new uh, lower quartile minus the upper quartile the difference between those two will be the same so your answer for this range will be 1.6 which will be the same as before and then for this one it will change to 500.2 grams okay that's it for question number 18 which is finding the median and the lower quartiles question number 19 we have f of x equal to 5 minus x divided by x part a evaluate this function so which means we have to replace the value of x by half so f half will be 5 minus half divided by half. So 5 minus half will be 4 and a half divided by half. So let's expand this one. So 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So 9 over 2 divided by half becomes 9 over 2 times. So the answer will be. 9. Okay, so that is part A. So now part B, uh, find the inverse of the function. So inverse will be, we have to first let y equal to 5 minus x divided by x. So then we have to make x subject. Okay, so cross multiply. So x times y is xy equal to 5 minus x so we bring x on one side we have x plus xy plus x equal to 5 we factorize x outside we have y plus 1 equal to 5 okay so now we have to find x x will be 5 divided by y plus 1 so thus we have the inverse function of x so since it is in terms of x we have to replace the value of y by x so 5x plus 1 is your answer. Question number 20. The table shows the results when a dice is thrown 300 times. Okay, so that's the total number of times the dice is thrown. So a dice has six sides, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the frequency is the number of times it lands on each side. Okay, so question number part A. So we first have the relative frequency of throwing a 4 is 0 0.2. So what does this mean? It means that out of the 300 times, the chances of me obtaining a 4 is 0 0.2. So frequency is P over 300 is 0 0.2. That's what it means. So now, part A, find the value of P and the value of Q. So P is what? P is, we have to cross multiply. So P will be 0 0.2 times 300. That will be so one decimal place here that will be 60 so p will be 60 now i find the value of q so if you know this is 60 the value of q will be 300 minus this 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 to get this so let's do that so let's first find the sum of all these numbers together so 55 plus 42 uh, plus 45 plus 60 and plus 50 okay so one thing so 5 plus 2 is 7 7 plus 5 is 12 so 12 so here we have 5 plus uh, 4 is 9 9 plus 1 is 10 10 plus 10 is um, 20 20 plus 5 is 25 so the sum of these numbers is 252 find the value of q q will be 300 which is the frequency here minus 252 
will be 48. So value of Q is 48. Okay. So now for part B, how many times would you expect to throw a 2 when this dice is thrown 1,000 times? So we first have to find the relative frequency of obtaining a 2. So it will be, we will have 42 over 300 times, 1,000 times, to find the expectation. So 0, 0, 0, so divide by 3, we will have 1, 2, uh, that will be 4, that will be 140. So the answer for part B will be 140. Question number 21. We have the points A, B, C, D, E lie on the circle center O. Okay, so that's the first information that we have. Moving on to the next point. The points B, O, E lie on a straight line. So B, O, E, which means this one is a diameter of the, uh, of the circle. So now we have A, B is parallel to E, D. So A, B and D, E are on the same direction. And the angle DEO, so DEO is 53 degrees. So part A, find the angle X. The angle X. So we have to use a rule here which says that for the angle on the same arc, as you can see, this angle is on the arc BD and this angle is on the arc BD as well. So the angle at center is always twice the angle at the circumference. So angle at center is twice angle at circumference which is 2 times 53 which is 106 so question part a angle x is 106 degrees okay so, so now find y as you can see uh, y is this angle so let's take it out. We have this shape. So this is uh, D, C, uh, B, and E. So we have to find this angle. So we observe that angle here is 53. So here we have a quadrilateral, which is four side shape. And we have to use a rule. Opposite angles add up to 180. So which means that y, uh, y degrees plus 53 equal to 180. So y is 180 minus 53. So 7, 10, that will be 7, 2, 1. So angle y is 127 degrees. Okay, so now we have to find angle z. Angle z is this angle here. Okay, so how do we find this? So we have to use um, our information, which is AB is parallel to ED. So let's continue uh, those two lines, for example. And we have the line DE as well. So, so we observe that uh, if you look at it, these two lines are parallel to each other and they are joined by this diagonal. So the angle here will be the same as the angle on this side, which means Z is equal to 53. So the answer for part Z will be 53 degrees. So let's label that 50. Okay, so now moving on to the last part, find the angle T. Angle T is this angle, okay? So as we can see, uh, BOE is a straight line going through the center O, which means BOE is the diameter of the circle. So if you have a triangle over the diameter of a circle, this angle here will be 90 degrees. So as we know, the sum of the angles in the triangle is 180. So find T. So 180 minus 53 minus 90 will be T. So let's do the math. That will be uh, 90 here. 90 minus 53 will be, so that will be uh, 8, 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. 8 minus 5 is 37. So angle T will be 37 degrees. So that was the last part of this question. Question number 22. 
The diagram shows a triangle ABC, so we have a triangle ABC, okay? So part A, using a pair of compass and a straight edge, construct the perpendicular bisector of AC. So AC is the line, we have to draw the bisector, the perpendicular bisector of AC. So it's very easy. So we have to measure the length from the point C, bigger than halfway of the line AC, then we draw an arc up and arc down. And we will go to point A, do the same thing. We draw an arc to intersect the first arc, and then we draw another arc to intersect the other arc. So right now we have two points of intersection. We have this point and this point. So we have to join them together to find the bisector of the line AC. Okay, so that is the answer, part A. Okay, so now moving on to part B, uh, part two. Find the locus, draw the locus of points that are equidistant from A, B, and B, C. So the point in common is A. So we have to draw the uh, angle bisector of A, of angle A. So how do we do this? We have to use our compass. We go to uh, point A. We intersect the line A, B. And we intersect the line A, C. So we have two points here. So we go to this point and draw an arc inside, like just like that. And then go to this point, do the same thing until you intersect the, the first arc. Okay, so now we have this point of intersection and this point. So we have to join these two to form the line, to form the locus of points that that is uh, equidistant from AB and AC. So that is answer part two. Uh, okay, now moving on to uh, part B. The perpendicular bisector of AC meets BC at P. So this one, uh, so this line of AC meets BC at P. This is the point P, right. Uh, Q is a point on BC that is equidistance from A, B, and A, C. So which means the point Q will be on this line, on B, C. So it will be here. So Q is this point and P is this point. So mark and label the point P and Q and measure PQ. So find the length of PQ. Let's see what do I get. So here we have, so we have one, two, three centimeters. So the length of PQ will be three centimeters. And that is question number 22. Question number 20. The diagram is a speed time graph. So a speed time graph representing part of the train's journey. So a speed time graph of this train's journey, okay? The train slows down uniformly from a speed of 40 meters per second to a speed of 24 meters per second. So 40 to 24, it slows down uniformly. And then it slows down again from 20 to 60, coming to rest, okay? So question part A, find the deceleration between time 20 and time 60. So when we have a speed time graph, deceleration is equal to the gradient of the graph. So between time 20 and time 60, we have to find the gradient of this line. Gradient is equal to the height divided by the base. So what is the height? The height is this, which is 24. And the base is 60 minus 20 will be 40. Okay, so divide by 4, we have uh, 6, we have 10, so it will be 0 0.6. So deceleration will be 0 0.6 meters per second square. So now part B, find the speed when time equals to 50. So time equal to 50 will be about, uh, let's say it's here, right? That's 50. So we have to find We have to find the speed. Let's call it uh, V for the speed. So here we can use um, similar triangles to find the speed of V. So what do I mean? I mean that we have this big triangle here. So let's draw it down. So we have the big triangle, which has a height of 24. 
and a base of 40 for this big triangle. And we have a small triangle here. And we don't know the height. The height is V. And the base is 60 minus 50, which is uh, 10. So we need to find V. So the thing we know is that these two triangles are similar to each other. And this is why we can use proportion to find the value of V. So which means we have to compare the corresponding sides. So uh, we can use V over 24 equal to 10 over 40. So find the value of V. V will be, we do, uh, this is divide, we cross multiply, we have V equal to 24 divided by 4, which is 6. So the value of the speed will be 6 meters per second for part B. So now part C, find the distance traveled from t equal to 0 and t equal to 20. So it will be this distance. So whenever we have a speed time graph, distance traveled is equal to area on the graph. So we observe that this height is 24 and this height is 40 and the height in between will be 20. So this region is a trapezium. So let's find the area of a trapezium. So area of a trapezium is half times sum of both sides. We have 40 and 24, sum of both sides. 40 plus 24 times the height in between, which is 20. So 20, 10. So 40 plus 24 will be 64 times 10 will be 640. So that is the distance traveled from t equal to 20, t, from t to 0 to t to 20. So your answer will be 640 for part C. Question number 24, we have matrices A and B. Part A, find 2A minus B. So 2A is what? 2A minus 2, 1, 0, minus B will be minus 2, 3, 1, 0. Okay, so 2 times 3 will be 6. 2 times minus 2 will be minus 4. 2, 0, minus, minus 2, 1, 3, 0. So now we do 1 by 1. So 6 minus minus 2 will be 8. 2 minus 1 will be 1. Minus 4 minus 3 will be minus 7. 0 minus 0 will be 0. So your answer for part A will be this matrix. So now we have to find the inverse of A. So to find the inverse, we have to first find the determinant of A, which is we have to take 3 times 0, so 3 times 0 minus, minus 2 times 1, so minus 2 times 1. Okay, so 3 minus minus 2 will be 5, because plus, minus minus become plus, 3 plus 2, 5. So we then have to find the adjacent matrix of A, which is equal to, we have to uh, switch those two, it will become 0, 3, and then switch the sign of those two, become 2 minus 1. So A inverse is 1 over determinant, which is 5 times this matrix. So 0, 2, minus 1, 3. And this will be your answer for part B. So now moving on to uh, part C, find the matrix X such that AX is equal to this matrix. So A we know already. A is a matrix 3, 2, 1, 0 times X equal to this column matrix. So what do we know is that we need to know by what kind of matrix we multiply a 4 by 4 matrix to obtain a color matrix. So X needs to be a matrix in this form, in the form of a column, I'm sorry, a row to obtain this one. So we will have A, B, no sorry, by column, actually column because we multiply row by column. So A needs to be in the form of this to obtain this matrix. So let's do that. So we have A times X, A, B, obtaining 3 minus 4. So we need to find the values of A and B. So 3 column by row, so 3 times A, 3A plus B. So minus 2 times A is minus 2A plus 0 equal to 3 minus 4. 
So now we equate, we have 3a plus b equal to 3, minus 2a equal to minus 4. So this one will be a equal to 2, which brings here. So if a equal to 2, so it will be 6 plus b equal to 3, so b equal to 3. So this, the value of x is replaced back in this matrix. We have a is equal to 2, and b will be actually minus 3, because 3 minus 6 is minus 3, so b is minus 3. So that is your answer for part C. So the, so the most important point to know here is that by what matrix we need to multiply uh, A to obtain this matrix. So 4 by 4 multiplied by what kind of matrix to obtain, it, to obtain a color matrix. So X can only be in the form of this matrix. So we uh, have to find the values of A and B to obtain this. That is your answer for part C. Question number 25. In the diagram, B is a midpoint of OA and uh, of OD. Sorry. So B is a midpoint of OD. So which means if OB is B, BD will be also B in the same direction. Okay, so that's the first information that we have. And then we have OA and OC are in the ratio of 1 to 3. So OA and OC. OA and AC are in the ratio of 1 to 3, which means OA is A, so as you can see, which means AC will be 3A. In the same direction, it will be 3A. Okay. So now part A, uh, express as simply as possible in terms of A and OB, OC. So from point O, we have to go to C, we have to move A and then 3A. So OC will be A plus 3a that will be 4a so oc will be 4a okay so now part two find c d c d so from c we have to move to o and then o move to d okay so c d equal to um, c o plus o d so from c if we move to o that will be so because A is in this direction, if we move up, it will be minus. So we have to move up minus 3A, minus A, and then plus OD will be in this direction. That will be B plus B. So your answer will be minus 4A plus 2B. So that will be the answer for CD. So minus 4A plus 2B. So now part B. Uh, P is a point on CD such that CP is 3 quarters CD. So we have a point P here on the line CD. The ratio of, so we have a ratio of, uh, of a fraction. So CP, this length, is 3 quarters of CD, which means this is 3, uh, the ratio, this is 1 for the ratio. But that's okay. Moving on to the next question, we have part 1. Express AP as simply as possible in terms of A or B. So what is AP? So from this diagram, we have A. We have to go to P. So we can go to A, go to C, and C, go to P, right? Okay, let's do that. So from A, AP, we first go to AC plus CP. Okay. So moving to uh, from, so let's move the first part, which is AC. That will be a to C will be 3A, that's your first part, plus CP. So we can see that CP is actually 3 quarter of CD. We know what is CD already. We did CD here, so we place the value of CD in this um, um, part. So you have minus 4A plus 2B. That is the value of... Um, of uh, CD and then we have to expand and simplify so let's do that so here we have uh, 3a equal to 3a this is uh, so 3 quarter times minus 4a that will be uh, minus 3a plus so we have 6 over 4 uh, 6 over 4b so 3 minus 3a will be 0a and then what's left will be 6 over 4b that will be the answer for um, so we have to do as simple as possible so we have to um, 
convert this to uh, let me one and a half maybe so how do I do this I first simplify I would say uh, divide by 2 we will have 3 and 2 and then 3 over 2 is 1.5 which is 1 and a half B okay that is AP will be 1 and a half B for example okay so now part 2 uh, we have to find the ratio of AP and BD so AP we know already which is so AP is uh, 1.5 B and what is the length of BD uh, BD is what BD is from this point to this point is just B so BD is B which is 1B so the ratio is 1.5 to 1 but we have to convert this to a whole number we can uh, do this by times 2 times 2 we will have 3 to 2 so your answer will be 3 to 2 for the ratio of AP and BD so now what special type of quadrilateral is ABDP ABDP so we have a uh, B DP so let's join the lines and uh, have a look to see what kind of the shape is this so a B D P so you can see this is not a rectangle this is not a square this is not a parallelogram because there's no uh, these two sides are not parallel but we do observe that this is a trapezium so for this one it will be a trapezium for the type of shape that is a b d p okay. and that's it for question number 25 so that was the last question of the paper if you guys have any questions leave a comment down below i will get back with you in the next 24 hours